Market. Thanks, Patrick. Well, joining us are Battleborn Progress Executive Director Annette Magnus and Citizen Outreach President Chuck Moot. Um, let's start with just the speech in general. Do you think that was the right tone that he set? I think it was the Trump tone. I think it's a tone that he established during the campaign. It's a tone that he wanted to establish on day one, and Trump was Trump uh, with the speech. So, yeah, I think it was exactly the tone that he wanted to set. Annette, what do you think? I agree. Trump was Trump. He was racist. He was sexist. And he's everything we know him to be. He drew that line in the sand for us. And now we know exactly where he stands on things. He didn't try and bring people in. He excluded folks. And so that's fine. We're going to be there to hold him accountable every single step of the way. Well, what, I, what was racist and sexist about the speech? Well, I mean, I, you're I just mean, making that up. No, I'm not making that up, actually. The fact that he brought up, you know, Muslims in the speech. He talked no, about no, he brought up all of this Islamic, crime Muslim in the inner terrorism. cities. What does he know about the inner cities? He's never lived in an inner city in his life. So you have to live in the inner city to know that there are problems in the inner city? He doesn't understand real life. He doesn't really? understand even the people he talks about every day, those middle-class Americans. He doesn't know what we actually go through. And so for me... He doesn't speak to me. He doesn't speak to the people that we're talking to, and he doesn't speak to people of color. And it was an exclusionary speech. And look, to say he's not a sexist, I mean, anybody who says that they grab people by the vagina, I mean, that's just a sexist thing to say. So he is a sexist, he is racist, and he is going to be leading our country now, and we're going to be there to hold him and accountable. And technically, he didn't say that part during the inaugural speech. No, he didn't although, say that, yeah. but he right. said it in the past. But, uh, but Chuck, you said Trump was Trump. Um, was there not uh, a, a, an opportunity here, at least, for Trump to kind of rise beyond what he had done on the campaign trail? The campaign's over. He won. Uh, it, it, was there not an opportunity to kind of rise above that and maybe start to build a coalition that, that, that is going to be uh, uh, able to help him uh, do what he wants to do legislatively? Well, I, I think you will. I think what, probably the thing that I was struck most about inauguration day was what happened after the speech itself and that was in his first signing ceremonies there is a real chemistry between him and Chuck Schumer that I don't think we've seen since Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill I mean you could see it in that signing ceremony publicly I know he called him a clown just a few weeks ago but privately they've got a relationship that I think is going to be uh, surprising to a lot of people Trump doesn't need to get everybody in the country behind him those who are willing to work with him he is going to be willing to work with them we've seen all manner of of liberals and Democrats come and meet with Donald Trump and have come away saying this is somebody I can work with. Those who want to work with him, he will work back. Those like Annette who have absolutely no interest in working with this president whatsoever are going to be left out in the cold for the next four to eight years. You think he, he and Chuck Schumer will have beers uh, no, after work? I don't as, think as so. Ronald Reagan and I Dick don't think so. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I don't see that at all. I actually think, again, you know, those Democrats who protested today, which they had every right to do, Republicans have done the same thing before as well. That, that it has set a tone. You know, I was watching a special this week that, that really talked about how they were calling the Republican Party incendiaries. So causing trouble, stirring up trouble just for the sake of stirring up trouble. And I think that's what he's doing in his speech today is he's stirring the pot. He's trying to, you know, rile people up. He knows there's 65 million of us who didn't vote for him because he's wrong and he's wrong for this country. And so the fact that that is what's representing us now, there's a lot of people upset today. And like you said, he, he didn't win the popular vote. He doesn't have a mandate. And there are a lot of people who will be there who don't want to work with him because of what he stands for and the rhetoric that he has spewed out of his mouth for the past year and a half. Real quick, Chuck, th about 30 seconds. Uh, he, 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 do you think he has a mandate? Of course he does. Uh, he's got more of a mandate than, than most presidents do because he said specifically what he was going to do on the campaign trail. Unlike most politicians who try to take both sides of an issue during the course of the campaign, and then you don't know what they stand for. You know what he stands for. The fact of the matter is, whether you like it or not, he's the president of the United States, and he's going to be president of the United States. And the fact well. of the matter is, we'll be there to hold him accountable. There you go. All right. Well, uh, we, will, uh, we will continue this discussion in our next segment. Right now, we're going to take it back to Patrick. Welcome back. Joining us are Battleborn Progress Executive Director Annette Magnus and Citizen Outreach President Chuck Moot. So there's a lot to discuss. Uh, a lot of, of, of money uh, for education in the governor's state of the state uh, budget. Uh, in addition uh, to the uh, funding source uh, for ESAs, uh, is Sandoval going to be remembered as the education governor, you think? 
He'll want to be, but I don't think so by the time this session's over. I don't believe the man ever supported ESAs. I think he conceded ESAs hmm. in order to get Republican votes for his big tax hike. But the whole notion that out of an $8.1 billion proposed budget, you can't find a piddly $60 million, uh, which would only fund half, a little bit more than half of the people who have already applied for it, is just insane. So you think uh, this the whole thing is a put-up job and he's going to let the Democrats kill the thing that he didn't want in the first place? I think that's exactly what's going to happen. It's unfortunate because public dollars should be going to public education, not necessarily public schools. And that's what a lot of the Democrats and liberals keep misinforming the public about. It's all about educating children and government-run schools aren't the only way and not necessarily the best way to educate our population. And that's what this really should be about. Do you, do you make that distinction, public schools versus public education? So I see public education as public schools. I don't see them as private schools. I don't see them as religious schools. I don't want my tax dollars going to those schools, period. If you want to put your kid into private school, then you can pay for that. Um, we should be investing in our schools and making our public schools better. Um, you know, at, will Governor Sandoval be the education governor? You know, we, he's in competition with Kenny Gwynn, I think, on that. And so, you know, he has done a lot for education, whether it's higher ed or K through 12. And he's had to work in a bipartisan way to get that done. And so there's a lot of people who deserve credit for that. You know, I, I really hope what you're saying is true is that, you know, he doesn't really want those vouchers. And so he's not going to be able to get them through. Um, I'm personally opposed to them, my organization is opposed to them, and we will be there to hold all of them accountable, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, because we are opposed to the ESA voucher program. It's mm. so unfortunate that you are so opposed to low-income and middle-income families getting the same opportunities to send their kids to the school of their choice that wealthy families have. What do you have against low- and no, middle-income families? No, this is a program set up <laughs> specifically for rich kids, because $5,800 will never get you. That is not even you. close to being true. Well, Will not now, how get can you, you say in. something like you that? You know it's true. It's not true. Also, so, every hang on, parent let me of talk every now. child in this country so gets all the dollars will not get you into a private school. That's not true. It's true. Stop saying things it that aren't true. It is true. It's it actual true. facts. And no, I know you guys fact. don't like facts, but those are facts. But it's not a fact. It will not Just get it in. And then parents, low income parents, will go into debt to be able to get their kids into private schools. Let's say it is true, which it's not. Let's say it is. The fact of the matter is, if let's say the minimum tuition is is eight thousand dollars it's a lot easier for a low-income or middle-income family to come up with the extra three than to come up with the full eight so again I don't know what you have against low-income and middle-income families. Well, let's, just, so let's assume that, uh, that she does not have anything she doesn't have it out for minority and low-income uh, students which but let me ask the let me ask the next question which is this other than ESA's let's take ESA's off the table because I think we clearly established a disagreement <laughs> on that but other than ESA's is there something in his budget that you think is going to meet a lot of resistance not from the Democrats. I mean, it's a Democrat liberal budget. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that we might see some Republican opposition for a change now that they're back in the minority. They squandered their majority uh, by blowing it with that, that largest tax increase in history. Uh, so I hope there's resistance from the Republicans up there. But no, I don't, I don't see too much about that, that Santa Claus thing that he did in his speech. Annette, well, uh, is he your governor? Is he, you support him? <laughs> I wouldn't exactly call him my governor. There were several things in that speech that I didn't agree with. Uh, mining lithium on our public lands was one of them. But, you know, there were things in there that I do agree with. My big question for this is, how does he pay for it all? Because this hypothetical marijuana tax is just that. If Jeff Sessions actually is confirmed, there is the possibility that that marijuana tax does not go into effect. And so you can't put all your eggs in one basket. There's got to be diversity there in how you're going to pay for things. And suddenly we, we figured out how to pay for a stadium, so I'm wondering how <laughs> he's going to figure out how to pay for all these. And we'll have to leave it right there, unfortunately, but a lot more to discuss at future shows. Patrick, over to you.